one test I'm interested in, getting on HF and uh, you know being able to talk locally in, uh, in an emergency situation. How many watts are you running, Royce? I count 703 to 10 watts. I mean, you're a 5.9, five, 5.9, nine, five, nine, absolutely crystal clear. This is awesome. I, I'm able to hear both of you really well, and it's just working out really well. If you've ever wanted to use HF radio to communicate locally, which is NVIS, your signal's going to go up and down and that's gonna reach people that are closer to you when you need to talk to them. So what we're hoping for this test today is to make contact with two different groups of people. One group is a group of guys setting up antennas in a park, and another one is up in a mountain range 27 miles away. The park guys are about 16 miles. And while you'd think that that's just pretty simple for a ground wave, we actually have three or four different mountain ranges between them and us. Now you may or may not need this kind of a communication tool, in your arsenal, but it's a good thing to know because you may be put in a situation one day where you need to know how to do this. Today's operation, we're gonna be setting up at a picnic table outside here at camp. I'm gonna be using battery power using our 20 amp hour battery. That's gonna be connected to a solar panel and charge controller so that we can keep feeding this battery while we're using it. And we're gonna be using three different antenna types. The first one is gonna be an N-fed antenna. This antenna is 162 feet long and both ends of the antenna are 25 feet up with a sag in the middle. The second antenna type is going to be the buddy pole system. It's over here set up in the 40 meter configuration for Envis, so it's only up about nine feet tall and using uh, radials extended off of the coils. And the third antenna option here is gonna be the magnetic loop. This loop goes from 10 through 40, and if I change out the elements on it, it will go up to 80 meters. I'm only gonna to get to do two antennas at a time, and I'm gonna be switching between the mag loop antenna and the buddy pole system while we're trying out 40 meters. J7SW N7 GPG, I can hear you through Royce's radio. <laughs> I'm not, uh, for whatever reason, I am not picking you up on mine, uh, which is surprising. I expected to be able to hear you. So you are S7. You are S7 to me. Now I'm talking to you on the loop, so it may just be that the loop is not very good for NVIS. I should change over to the buddy pole and see if that helps you at all. I'll try that now. Okay, so now I'm on the buddy pole. That's a, it's set up for Envis 40 meters. Has that made any difference for you? Uh, back to you. Yes, I can't hear you at all, uh, but I, I can hear you with lots of static. All right, so I've switched over to the uh, to a mag loop antenna, and uh, you you came up here a lot louder for me there, uh, Royce. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, every once in a while you come in uh, louder. I don't know if that's where you're holding your mic or what. I'm gonna rotate the antenna now so it's uh, it's facing more towards you guys. So now it's facing more your direction. Uh, does that help at all? Well, on the S meter, you're coming to seven, seven and a half, but there's a lot of static. Yeah, you come up to a S7 as well. You're also S7. Oh, I'm gonna switch to a third antenna. We'll see if that makes a difference for you. A KB7JSW, K7SW. Um, how are you hearing me, over? All right, I think I heard you say that uh, he doesn't hear me at all f through this antenna, Roger. Yes, that's correct. All right, I've switched back to the uh, loop antenna now, and I'm just talking on that one uh, where the noise floor is quieter. Have Keith transmit so I can tell the difference on uh, his signal, over. Yeah, I changed the direction of this loop antenna that I'm on, and you're actually coming in louder that way. So hopefully I've talked long enough here that uh, you'll be able to tell. All right, well, I guess that means that test did not work. But when I changed the direction, I could hear you better, but you couldn't hear me at all. Let's go over some of the advantages of each of these antennas and why you might pick one over the other. The loop antenna itself takes little room to get deployed, so you can set this up actually inside if you wanted to. It's easy to manipulate this antenna, and it does not require a tuner. You're going to manually tune this antenna to get it on the frequency that you want. And for the buddy pole system, it's self-supporting, it has its own mast, and the instructions that you get with that antenna are easy to follow to set up the coils, and there are markings on the coils to determine which band and operating frequency that you want to get to. Depending on the NFED antenna, we'll talk about the one that I'm using here. This one allows you to band hop, change frequencies, and no tuner is generally required, and the SWR is low. And of course, how you deploy that antenna will determine 
if you are going to need a, a tuner or some other device like that on a specific frequency. All right, let's cover some of the disadvantages of all three of these antennas to help you know the reality of when you deploy something like this, what that means to you. We'll start off with the loop antenna. The disadvantage for me for the loop antenna is that it's very narrow banded. It's very high Q, which means you're not going to need a tuner. You find the frequency you're going to operate on and you use the tuning knob to get dialed into exactly that frequency. And usually your SWR will be between 1.2 and 1.5. The buddy pulse system is band specific, meaning if you're going to operate on 40 meters, that's where you're going to stay. And you adjust the, the tuning of that antenna with the uh, adjustment clips for each of the coils. And it's easy to follow their instruction manual based on the band. And because you have to go through those steps, it does take a lot longer to set this antenna up, at least for me. The infed antenna. The downsides to that, the disadvantage there is you do require trees or some sort of mast or a structure to attach your antenna to. And you're not always guaranteed that you're going to have that space when you set up an antenna like this. So depending on the space you have for your end-fed antenna, you are going to need a lot of room, a lot of space to get that thing up and deployed. Now at this point we've tried each configuration, the different antennas between the different operators and the different radios on 40 meters, and the results weren't that good, but it was interesting to see what worked and what didn't work. Now we're moving to 80 meters and do the same tests. Now I'm guessing that uh, Royce's antenna does not do 80 meters, is that right? No, his is an uh, NFED 40. So Kevin Royce is trying to call you. He, he thinks his radio tuned it. Um, are you able to hear him at all? Nope, I could not hear him at all. I've been listening that whole time. Okay, well, <laughs> it's kind of odd. He can hear you on 40, and, and I can't, but I can talk to you on 80, and he can't. So, but, you know, I, I guess that's kind of expected with his antenna, maybe. Yeah, right now, my... Uh, is not 25 feet or anything. It's just, I don't know, I'd say it's like maybe maybe 10 feet in some places and not so high in others. N7GPG K7SW. N7GPG K7SW. Yeah, K7SW, N7GPG. I've got a copy on you. Not quite as strong, though. Are you on the, uh, on the loop? So this is still the NFED, but I'm going to switch over to that now. Okay, so now I'm on the loop. I got some high SWR, so we'll see if that uh, makes a difference. Wow, so I guess uh, I guess you heard nothing. Yeah, I didn't hear a thing. Uh, right now you're doing about uh, S7, so you must be back on the end And I'm back to the loop again. I'm changing directions as I move the loop around. I'm uh, trying to get it directional down towards you uh, this way to see if there's any difference. Uh, back to you. I think I heard you. I, I could tell somebody was just in there. Uh, and I'm guessing that's probably when you were on the uh, on the small magnetic loop. I think that's what you're trying. Uh, but the NFED is definitely the winner. I made some changes to the loop, uh, but I'm not sure if this is going to make it better or worse as I'm trying to get the SWR down. Is that any uh, better? Can you hear me at all on this one? Okay, well, if that's you, Kevin, uh, I, I can tell somebody's in there, but uh, not quite making it. The NFED is uh, the big winner over the magnetic loop for the NVIS, but uh, I could tell you were in there with the uh, magnetic loop, but uh, it, it wasn't readable. And uh, But on the NFED, uh, you're perfectly readable. Really good. Uh, Roya said he wants to try you again on his. Kevin, uh, Roya was trying. Did you hear him at all? No, I did not hear Royce, but I did hear Eric come in. He's uh, he's up in Heber. I tried on two antennas to hear Royce. I'm hearing you really good, and and I heard Eric. KI7WJP, go ahead. This is Kilo India 7, with you to the I hear you all loud and clear, loud and clear. Over. I can hear him just fine here, and uh, putting out probably right around uh, uh, 5 watts. So uh, are you able to hear me up there in Heber? I hear you amazingly well. You are coming in in an F9. Um, <laughs> F9 and, I mean, absolutely crystal clear. So I actually am really impressed that this is happening on 80 meters right now. How am I coming in on your end? Well, you're perfectly readable. I don't have you at uh, a 9, but I do have you uh, peaking up to about 6 or 7 at times, uh, right before the end of your last transmission. 
Houston, you were down to five, but uh, it's coming through perfect. Uh, my call is Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia or KI 7 WJP. I am uh, super happy about this. Yeah, this is pretty cool. You know, <laughs> you faded out though, right when you were giving me your name and call sign, and then uh, and then when you were done with that, you, uh, you came right back up, so I still missed it. I think this has been a, a, a good uh, test to see how uh, the NVIS works, uh, especially this time of day and everything. Back to you. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. I think it's... Uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, I'm running five watts. Uh, just as a note, you are not fading at all. Like, like zero fade. It's great. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. I know uh, uh, earlier when we were on 40 meters, Kevin was able to uh, talk to Roy as he's sitting over here next to me with his radio. Kevin was coming through, and I could not hear Kevin at all on 40 meters, but here on 80 meters, it's pretty neat. That's, uh, it's good to know that uh, just five watts will jump over the mountains, and I can talk to Heber as well. And I like this idea if, uh, you know, the repeater system ever goes down and things like that, uh, we have an op another option for local communications. Anyway, uh, Kevin, you still there? I'll hand it back over to you. Yeah, yeah, I was just listening to you guys. You both sound really good. Your signals will be up. down to nothing. I could still hear you because I have zero noise floor. But that was just crazy. And then it went back up to uh, S8, S9 again. And the rest, of the, the rest of the time it's been going on. Kevin, you're coming through at S plus, S9 plus. Um, as far as antenna, I'll tell you my configuration here. I've, I've got my DIY um, or homebrew antenna that I built out of 24 AWG silicone cage coated uh, copper wire. Uh, it's got a built-in choke with a 43 type ferrite and uh, running about 12 feet of, or maybe 15 feet of RG316, so that's really, really skinny coaxial. This is also the FT817, so it's just uh, super light duty as far as, uh, as far as what it is, what it's asking for energy. Um, I'm running 10 watts, and I'm running an NFED antenna that's 25 feet up in the air. Both ends are 25 feet, and there's a sag in the center, and that's connected uh, to the top of a 20-foot mast, 25-foot mast on the back of my camper. And I'm running some coax out here to my table. Hey, okay, you guys are sounding really good. Okay, Eric, while he's hooking that up, I'm going to try switching over to the loop antenna and see if that's if, if you're able to hear me at all and if I can hear you. And I'm on the loop here. How copy, Eric? Do you hear me at all? All right, Kevin, just so you're aware, I uh, completely lost you on that last one. Interesting. So that's on the magnetic loop that's only a couple feet off the ground. All right, I'll stand by for uh, Royce to get his radio hooked up. J7SW. J7SW. That's JSW. Well, uh, I'm on an IC703. Uh, looks like we've all gone down a little bit on the band here. You are coming through, but it's definitely a quality of probably about a four and a five or four and a four. Yeah, I should probably try hooking up the uh, KX2 and seeing if that, there's any difference with that. The K7SW on the KX2. Yeah, I, I can't believe that uh, that just the rig makes that big of a difference. And, and also, you know, being able to feed 10 watts into a resonant antenna makes a big difference too. Okay, I'm back on my radio now. Uh, switch, uh, 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 we'll take the antenna off of Royce's and put it back over on mine. Uh, we can hear you just fine over there. Okay, yeah, this is Eric. Um, you are, yeah, Roy, you're coming through, again, as loud and clear, just as, just as well as you were uh, earlier. It had to get to 5859, so 
really, really good quality there. I actually have my 7300, IC7300, and I am running 5 watts, though. Or, yeah, I have to run the, uh, the tuner on my radio in emergency mode, because antenna is actually a little bit uh, low in frequency, and it's probably because it's so close to the ground. At this point, Keith and Royce needed to leave, so Eric and I decided to do a little bit more testing from our two locations. Oh, uh, yeah, let's try 40 meters. I think that would be kind of fun. All right, so let's try this. This is the loop. And it's not totally yet, but this is the loop. I'm hearing you get on. All right, well, you're uh, coming in and out. 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 9, somewhere there. But it's, it's working really well. You're probably pushing a little bit more power than I am. You're about at 5-5. Five, five. Um, this is on the NFED. And on the uh, loop. It was a little bit less than that, but it was quieter because it was knocking out whatever noise that was there. And so uh, there was a difference, but you're totally readable on both antennas. So now I'm on the buddy pole. This is the buddy pole. It's only like nine feet off the ground, uh, the same uh, north-south direction. I can hear you really good on it as well. So you went, you came up on the NFET. You were peaking at 5'9". 5'9", 5'9". And on the buddy pole, I'm now on now. You're about uh, an extra left. You faded there a little bit um, in in and out. So you went from a, like a quality 5 down into a 4 and dipped right back up. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's fun to do it. And I think for me, uh, HF communication really is relevant when it comes to um, targeted contact. The clear winner here for me was the NFED antenna. This gave us enough information to know what we need to do for future setups, whether we're doing uh, camping or doing something in a park. Let me know in the comments down below if you've done a test like this with some Envis antennas or you've been looking forward to doing something like that. And you just haven't done it yet, but you're going to now. Big shout out goes to the three guys who helped me on this project, Keith N7GPG and Royus KB7JSW and of course Eric KI7WJP. After all, making antennas is a huge part of having fun in this hobby, at least I think so. Make sure you click that like button and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out those links in the description. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.